So Super 8 film was released to the public in about the 1960s, 70s, with the purpose of allowing families to sort of document things like days out, holidays. It was just because access to film at that time was quite limited. Back then you didn't have the ability to pick out your phone and film something. So with all these major films being released, I think they, they just wanted people at home to just be able to document things in some sort of way. So it's like the first way of making proper home videos at uh, an affordable rate. But a lot of people started to make short films on them, like especially people like Steven Spielberg and J.J. Abrams. They would make their own little films with the resources they had on Super 8. Over the past few years it's kind of made a comeback, like Kodak have been sort of going on about releasing a new Super 8 camera, but sadly that hasn't come to pass, which is a shame because it makes such a big difference. But in a nutshell, it's just an old film reel you put in a Super 8 camera and you get two and a half minutes roughly of footage, but there's just something so special about the retro look it gives, it makes everything so much more nostalgic. Like, you can get nostalgia through Instagram stories and things like that, but just nothing compares to how Super 8 can look, it's just so beautiful. If you want to get it, like they sell Super 8 cameras on eBay, there's no original ones coming out until Kodak sort all this out. <laughs> but you can get a decent Super 8 camera on eBay for about £25. I got mine on there for roughly the same amount. You can get um, a film reel for about £35 and there's there's three major ones that you can get from Kodak. There's 50D, that's good for the summer. Uh, there's 200T which is good if you're sort of mixed, you're not sure where you're going and stuff, it's kind of improvised. So it works well both indoors and outdoors. And then there's 500T, that's if you're filming in the dark at night time in winter. And yeah, those, those are the three main ones. There's a lot of other ones, but I'll be honest, I haven't used them. But in terms of like why I used them, I sort of, I first discovered it with a music video for Roadless by Frightened Rabbit. It was this 8mm film reel, like archive footage. And this artist sort of played around with it a lot, like did sort of like scratches on the reels in rhythm to the music. It was like, so fascinating to watch and I sort of wanted to find the ability to do something like that. In one of my university lectures we had some experimental artists come in. They brought in a Super 8 camera so we went around filming a bunch of things of it and then we went into the darkroom, developed it and projected it and it was, it was really cool just seeing all those moments. Like us just playing around with the camera having a laugh. It was just great to see it like in that sort of retro feel. So eventually I got a Super 8 camera myself and I did, um, I did more to things of it like we went to a sort of forest and played around with it but didn't quite get right because it was so shadowy we bought the wrong kind of film as i carried on with it i sort of got more and more videos of it like the next one i got was me just walking my dog around in the park that was the first one that was really successful like people thought it was absolutely beautiful just seeing how happy the dog was it's just one of those moments captured on film just looks so wholesome everything's at peace i started doing them for like travel so I bought three cartridges when I went to San Francisco with my older brother. It's just a great way to look back at it. It's like you have all the memories in your head, all the pictures on your phone, but nothing encapsulates it quite like that video. It's just that old retro feel to it gives you nostalgia automatically. And then I did another one for when I went to Edinburgh later that year with a couple of friends. And again, it just came out so well and like my, my friends were so amazed by it because they, they didn't know anything about it. And I showed it to them and they were just completely blown away, they were so happy. That's sort of where I mainly place it for days out slash holidays because I think those are some of the most important things to capture. But there was like this video I found on YouTube, it's just called um, Super 8 2015. It's just one of the most beautiful things ever made. It just captures all those feelings you want from it. It's just, all it is is like two and a half minutes of friends just <laughs> messing about having a laugh. But like, it's just so beautiful, I, like, I genuinely can't watch it anymore because I'll just burst into tears because it's just that amazing and so that's really the feeling I wanted to capture and we're back in January I went on a day trip with a couple of other friends to Bristol but sadly a lot of the footage didn't come out very well which was really sad for me but we still managed to get some nice moments on there so you still got something even, <laughs> even when it's bad it's still good like you still captured the three of us smiling and having a laugh on film and that's the most important thing. And I got another one of sort of the summer. Just because it's been such a difficult year, like I just wanted to have something nice to be able to look back on this year because everyone's going to look back on 2020 with such contempt and rightfully so. But if you can just have something nice from that year as well, it just 
it can just drown out all that negativity sometimes. But I also managed to get a trip to Amsterdam with my friends on Super 8, and it took such a while to get back, but like, so sort of just after we got back, we isolated for two weeks in accordance to guidelines, but then we spent so long waiting for it to come back, and then the second wave began, but then we got that, looked at it, and we were like, oh, this is beautiful. Such an interesting journey. You send it off to these guys called Gage Film. That's who I send them off to. I'll, I'll leave a link below for them. It sort of takes about three to five weeks to develop, but it's such an anxious wait. But when you get back and you see it, it's all worth it. Another part of the magic is you don't know how it's going to turn out until you see it. When you're filming with a camera like this, you often see it on the viewfinder. When you're the same with an iPhone, with Super 8 Film, you just press record and hope, and then when it comes back, it's you know, like that's how you discover it. I mean, in terms of what I want to do in the future, it's just <laughs> simple. Just keep doing it. I think. It's such an expensive procedure that like, I can't do it anywhere near as much as I'd like to, but I'm going to keep doing it when I can, like capturing days out, holidays, things like that, because it just means the world to me, and I'll get slightly morbid here, but my Super 8 films, if I were to pass away tomorrow, I want people to see the clips of me smiling and having fun on there, and that being how they remember me, because it's the perfect way to capture a memory, I think. There honestly isn't a better way, there isn't a better media to capture it, because it just, the nostalgia, the imagery, it's just hard to explain unless you actually do it. It's my favourite bit of art to do, and I hope to get many more in the future and build my library. That's me and Supre. If anyone wants to know more about it, I'd be delighted to have a chat with you, let you know my thoughts, give you some advice on how it works, because Again, I, I just want more people to do it because it, it shouldn't, it's such a beautiful art form, it shouldn't be wasted. So, yeah, that's my vlog. Thank you.